polynomial inequalities. There's two ways you can do this too. There's an easier way and a harder way. But for both ways, you need to know what's being asked and you need to find the zeros of the function. So we're going to do that. We're going to take, well, first we're going to translate this into English. In English, let me make this big enough for you to see. In English, what this is saying is where. Where means where on the X axis. Is X squared minus nine X plus 18 so we'll say f of x. f of x equals x squared minus 9x plus 18 above the x-axis. Here's what it really says in another way, and that is where is where is x squared minus 9x plus 18 greater than y equals 0. You could even put a y, y equals here. Where is y equals, or f of x equals, x squared minus 9x plus 18 greater than, which means above, y equals 0? Well, y equals 0 is the x-axis. So let's take a look at it on a graph. Okay. So I'll, I'll make this bigger in a minute. Where is x squared minus 9x plus 18 above, not above or equal to, but above the x-axis? Oh. Okay, zoom six, zoom six, there, now. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, let me graph this for you because that's what I really want to do so that I can draw on it. Make it a little sharper, maybe. Yeah, it's better. I don't I need it bigger though, just so you can see. Here we can clearly see what the uh, x-intercepts are, what the zeros are. The zeros of this function are gonna be whoop, 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 flatten. That's the term used for making it permanent. Three. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, now, now I can answer their question. Where, where? Well, I'm going to change the color to green. Um, where is this above the x-axis? Well, here's the x-axis.
So where is this graph above the X axis? Not on, but above. Here. And here. I have the open circles there. Now remember this goes here and here. Um, I have the open circles there because this says strictly or strictly above y equals zero, not touching. So now I can tell you where on the x-axis this graph is above the x-axis. From negative infinity to negative three, but not including negative three, three, negative three. From negative infinity to three, to the left side of three, from the right side of three, ah, uh -uh, no it's not. It's below the x-axis from the right side of three to the left side of six. That's not what I'm looking for because this said greater than. And the x-axis is y equals zero. Okay, the x-axis is y equals zero. That's where y is always zero. So from the right side of six to the left, uh, going to the left forever. All right, so this part of the x-axis, because this guy keeps going up and to the left, up and to the left, up and to the left, this guy keeps going up and to the right, up and to the right, up and to the right. So I can tell you just from looking at the graph that the answer to this is going to be all of the X's on the X axis from negative infinity to the left side of three unioned up with from the right side of six to, to infinity. Now let me double check and make sure Make sure that they use use cause I forget. We only recently started teaching polynomial. Well, actually, that's not true. I just didn't teach it. Um, um, okay, so where are we? We're at 11.4. Okay, second set of homework on 11.4. Preview, now we'll do this. Okay, this is going to be a different problem. With different numbers, but this is, yes, they use a U. Okay, that's all I wanted to see. Make sure because I don't want to tell you wrong. So this part of the X axis. And this part of the X axis. Is where those arms are above the X axis. And so we have solved our inequality. That's the quick and easy way. Now I'm going to show you the traditional way. 
ho-hum. There are steps to the traditional method. Because remember, people didn't always have graphing calculators, and a lot of the people watching this video never learned how to use their graphing calculator. So they don't know the easy way. So now, the very first step, step one, step one, I am going to take f of x equals x squared minus 9x plus 18, and all I'm going to do is find the x-intercepts, which means I have to find the zeros because it's a polynomial. In fact, it's a quadratic polynomial. So let's see, positive 18. is going to equal three times six, or two times nine. I mean, let's not forget that, two times nine, or one times 18. Those are in there too. But I know that three plus six is nine, positive nine. <gasps> but that's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for negative nine. So, it just so happens that 18 also equals negative 3 times negative 6. And if I add negative 3 plus negative 6, I will get negative 9. Woohoo! Here I go. X, X, minus 3, minus 6. Now set each, each uh, um, factor equal to zero. X minus three equals zero. X minus six equals zero. Add three to both sides, X equals three. Add six to both sides, X equals six. So, my X intercepts are, three zero and six zero. Step two. Draw the X axis. And label the X intercepts. I'm going to have to add another page, I fear. Oh well, worse things have happened. Okay, I'm gonna draw the x-axis. In my typical wiggly way. No, I'm not. I'm gonna go down here and really draw the x-axis. Okay, there's no need for it to be that long. So for instance, I have positive three and positive six. There you go. Now I have three intervals. So step three, write the intervals. Um, at which point, I'm going to have to insert, yeah, I'm gonna have to insert a page 
after page one, insert one page. It ought to be there. Yeah, and the other problems there too. Okay, so write the intervals. Here are the intervals. Oops, I forgot to write negative infinity. So negative infinity to the left side of three, the right side of three, the left side of six, the right side of six, to positive infinity. Those are my three intervals and I write them in a table. It's good to make a table right here. So here are going to be my intervals. Negative infinity to negative, uh -uh, to positive three, positive three to positive six, positive six to positive infinity. Okay, now there's another step. Step four. Write test points. Okay, a test point is a test point that you're going to test. So zero would be a good test point over here. Let's make them, an, should I make them another color? Nah. This is a test point. Now a number between three and six, how about we could, how about four or five? Let's go five. And a number after six, how about 10? Okay, now. Test f of x equals x squared minus 9x plus 18 with the test points. And I'm going to abbreviate points. All right. So if X equals zero, then F of zero is going to equal zero squared minus nine times zero plus 18. And include the sign while you're at it. It's positive 18. There's a reason for that. I'll show you in a minute. Um, five. X equals five. So F of five equals five squared minus nine times five plus 18, so that'll be 25, minus 45, plus 18. 25 minus 45 is negative 20, plus 18 will be negative two. Okay, and then X equals 10. F of 10 
will equal 10 squared minus 9 times 10 plus 18. So that will be 100 minus 90 plus 18. That will be positive 10 plus 18. And that will be positive 28. Okay, that is, what is that? Write the test points. This is step five. Test the test points. Now, now that you have positive 18, negative 2, ne positive 28, go back to your table. Oh, the test value. Okay, well, I forgot to do that. 0, 5, 10. And what is the sign? Okay, well, plus, minus, plus. Okay, now, step six. Choose the intervals. that agree with the inequality signs. Inequality sign, there's only one. Oh, well, that looks like an H. Okay, our inequality sign was greater than zero. That means positive. What that equals in English is positive because all numbers greater than zero are positive. They're certainly not negative. So that means I'm going to use the intervals that have pluses for positive. And therefore, here are my solutions. I'm going to write them here, and then I'll go down and write that as part of step six. negative infinity to three unioned up with six to infinity. So if you don't know how to use your graphing calculator, you have to do it the long way. Negative infinity to three unioned up with six to infinity. No brackets because the that's strictly greater than, only positive, not zero. So here are the steps if you're doing it the old fashioned way. You set the quadratic or the cubic or whatever, whatever, equal to zero and solve for X. You find the zeros, in other words, and then you write the, uh, um, the x-intercepts. Now, step two, you draw an x-axis and you graph the intercepts. Step three, make intervals. The, uh, the x 
intercepts divide the x-axis into intervals. Step four, choose test points inside each interval. You don't have to choose the ones I chose. You've got choices. Step five, start testing the intervals. Find the number and the sign of the number that is positive 18, negative 2, positive 28 that go with each of your test values. Step six, choose the intervals that go with the sign. You want positive. These are the intervals that gave you the positive. So you can do the six steps or you can use your graphing calculator. Incidentally, I know Proctor U doesn't like graphing calculators. Tag with them. I like graphing calculators. So please feel free to use your graphing calculator. Okay, I'm gonna save that. And then we're going to go on to the next one and do this. Looks like we've got a cubic this time. Remember, this is polynomial inequalities, not just um, quadratics. Okay, first step, no choice. Everybody has to do this first step. Because you can't put it in your graphing calculator yet. This has to be less than zero or greater than zero or less than or equal to zero or greater than or equal to zero like this. So. I'm going to subtract 5x from both sides. In fact, I'm going to do this in an easier way. I am going to write x cubed minus 2x squared. I'm going to subtract 5x from both sides. And I'm going to add 6 to both sides so that 5x minus 5x is 0, negative 6 plus 6 is 0. I will have a 0 over here. So here's what I've got. x to the third minus 2x squared minus 5x plus 6 is less than 0. Now I'm going to graph it. I'm going to graph it. And this time I really will make it larger for you to see. But first I have to type it in so clear. Clear. OK. Yeah. X caret three, come on down. Um, I need to have that small right now so I can see this. Minus two X squared. <coughs> minus five x plus 6. OK, now here's what I've got. Uh, view. Let's 
Well, dead gummit. There, now you can see it. Okay, I'm going to graph this. And I'm going to, I've learned the hard way that I should take a picture of this one. However, there's no reason for me to go right to the end. There. So I can make it bigger on the paper so that you can see it. Okay, sometimes you can't see what the zeros are, what the x-intercepts are. Uh, here you can, though. So, when you can, use it. Negative 2, this is negative 2. Oh, oh, flatten. That makes it stick to the paper. Negative 2, the virtual world. 1. Three. Is that negative two visible? Okay, I'll put it up here like the others. Negative two. So now I can see my intervals. I can see my intervals. They are, let me write negative infinity positive infinity. Um, well, I'll make it with that color this time. I like it better anyway. Here to here, here to here, here, here and here to here. And what we're looking for is where on the x-axis, where always means on the x-axis, where on the x-axis is f of x equals x to the third minus 2x squared minus 5x plus 6 below the x-axis. See, this is math code. That means below the x-axis. This means above the x-axis. Well, I can look at the graph and see immediately that this part is below the x-axis. This part is below the x-axis. So there are gonna be two parts of the graph. See, this part goes, keeps going over here, 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 here. <laughs> well, slower, but it does. It's going to be all the way over there. And indeed, you learned your rules about um, in behavior yesterday, didn't you? Yeah. So you know this is going to go down forever and to the left forever. 
This is going to go up forever and to the right forever. So this interval and this interval are going to be your solutions. And they are negative infinity to negative two unioned up with one to three. And if this had been turned around the other way, you would have chosen this interval because that would be above and this interval because that would be above. But it's not, this says below, below, below. 